what's up youtube welcome to dot net mo this is my fifth video in the series of common 50 c sharp bigness programs or exercises and this is the last part in this video series before starting this video tutorial i would like to ask you a favor if you found this video helpful please thumbs up this video if you are new here please be subscribed to this channel dot net mo without further ado let's get started here we have the first question of this part question number 41 in this question we are going to find symbol and compound interest in c sharp so let's look what we have done inside this program first of all we will request the user to end the values of required fields first of all we need principal rate then interest rate then duration we store those values inside these variables dbl principal dbl interest in percentage and in duration in order to find simple interest you can use this equation principal into interest in percentage into duration all divided by 100 and for compound interest you can use this equation right here let me run this application principal rate will be 10,000 interest rate will be 5 percentage then duration will be 3 year so here we have the output symbol interest is 1500 and compound interest is 1576.25 now let's discuss question number 40 in question number 42 we are going to find salvage value or depreciation salvage value or depreciation value means suppose if i buy a new laptop which costs thousand dollar today in the next year its value will be decreased to somewhere five hundred dollar or six hundred dollar the reduced value after some period of use is called salvage value or depreciated value in this program we are going to find salvage value of a product so let's look what we have done inside this program 42 in order to find salvage value of a product we need this much details purchase rate then annual depreciation in percentage that means how much will it uh, reduce its price after one year then duration we will store these details inside these variables purchase rate depreciation percentage and duration in order to find salvage value or depreciation value we can use this equation here now let me run this application purchase rate will be thousand then annual depreciation percentage will be 18 or something then duration will be three years so here we have the output salvage rate after three years is around 550 now let's discuss question number 43 in question number 43 we are going to find multiplication table for numbers from 1 to 50 so let's look what we have done inside this program this is a simple question here we have a for loop which iterate from 1 to 50 on each iteration we will create multiplication table for current iteration variable from 1 to 10 let me run this application so here we have the output showing multiplication table for numbers from 1 to 50 now let's discuss question number 44 in question number 44 we want to find vowels in a string first of all we will request the user to enter the string we will store the entered string inside this variable str string and then we will iterate through each character in the given string inside the for loop we will check whether current character is from any of the five vowels a e i o u if it is a vowel we will increment this variable here vowel count finally we will print the vowel count here let me run this application enter the string i will type hello world so in this string we have three vowels one e two o so here we have the output number of vowels is three now let's discuss question number 45 in question number 45 we want to find gross salary so let's look what we have done inside this program inside the program first of all we will request the user to enter the base salary using base salary you can find gross salary using this equation right here so far we have discussed five simple questions now let's deal with some complex questions in question number 46 we want to manage student records using a structure 
so let's look what we can do inside this program first of all we have declared a structure with name student inside this structure here we have a variable to store the student name as str name then we have roll number which is used to identify students inside a class then we have three variables mark one mark two mark three two to store marks from three different subjects then we have a variable mark total to sum all these three marks inside this run function we have declared an array of the structure student initially it does not have any element here we have a while loop inside the while loop we have given some choice for operations like insert delete display and exit one for insert two for delete three for display and four for exit in case of one we want to insert new employee record in this program we are limiting number of students inside this array to 10. so first of all we will check whether this array is already occupied with 10 records or not if it is occupied we will print this message record is full here you can see a variable in last index of record it tracks index of newly added student record first of all we will increment this index by one here we will resize this array initially it does not have any element before addition we have to add one element into this array that is what we have done here using array resize function after that we will ask user to enter required details of new student things like name roll number then marks in subjects like english maths and science finally we will sum up these three marks inside this variable in mark total if choice of operation is two we want to delete a student record that is what we have done inside this case too first of all we will check whether student array is empty or not in this else part first of all we will request the user to enter the record number record number means position of student we will store the record number inside this variable in record number and here we have an if clause to check whether given position is valid or not if it is not valid or higher than the maximum position we will print this message record is not that much big if given position or record number is valid we will shift elements after this given position to left by one position in this way we can delete record after all we have to reduce the last index of record like this if choice of operation is three we want to display all the students that we have inserted that is what we have done inside this case three part here we have used for loop to iterate through each student record if choice of operation is four we will exit this program here in this while statement here so let me run this application now i want to insert a new record so i will select the choice one name of student will be tony roll number will be 63 mark in english will be 97 then 98 and 99 so here we have inserted record for tony i want to display the record for tony for that you can select the choice three now i want to insert one more student so i will select the choice one name of student will be james roll number will be 33 mark in english will be 96 then maths will be 98 then science will be 96 so here we have inserted two student record now i want to see details of students that we have inserted so i will select the option three now i want to delete the record for tony so i will select the choice two then record number will be one hit enter so here we have deleted record for tony i want to display remaining student details three so here you can see the details of student james finally we will exit this program for that you can select the choice four now let's discuss question number 47 instead of student here we have employee records similar to previous question 46 so i am not going to explain this program now let's discuss question number 48 in question number 48 we are going to find determinant of nth order matrix first of all we will request the user to enter order of square matrix 
we will store the order inside this variable i n dimension and then we will read the elements inside the square matrix using these two for loops in order to find determinant of square matrices we will use these steps for 2 by 2 matrices we just need to multiply diagonal elements and then subtract them for this matrix we can find determinant like this 3 into 6 minus 8 into 4 that means minus 14 for 3 by 3 matrices we can do this first of all we will select the first row first element we will exclude the elements from same row and same row then we have a 2 by 2 matrix here e f h i we already discussed how to find determinant of 2 by 2 matrix a into first element into determinant of this matrix that is e i minus f h then we have to give alternative minus symbol here for first element it will be plus and second element it will be minus one and for third element it will be plus one for the second element we will select the first row second element we will exclude the elements from same row and same column so here we have a two by two matrix d f g i so in this way we can find determinant of three by three matrix in the same way we can find determinant of 4 by 4 matrix also so that is what we have done inside this extra function here function d i'm not going to explain this function d it will be same as we explained with these examples here let me run this application here enter the order of matrix i will type 2 then we want to enter elements of array 3 6 1 2 so here we have the matrix 3 6 1 2 if we find determinant of this matrix 3 into 2 will be 6 1 into 6 will be 6 6 minus 6 is 0 so here we have the output now let's discuss question number 49 in question number 49 we just need to find roots of complex numbers Basically, complex numbers are represented like this a plus b i, where i is equal to root of minus 1, where i is called imaginary unit, and a is the real part, b is the imaginary part. So, let's look what we can do for finding roots of a complex equation. First of all, we will request the user to enter real and imaginary part of a complex number. We will store the values inside these variables in real part and in imaginary part. And then here we have a lengthy equation to find roots of complex equation. I am not going to explain these equations because you can find these equations easily on internet. So let me run this application. And the real part will be 3 then imaginary part will be 6. So here we have the roots of this equation. Now let's discuss question number 50 which is the last question in this series. In this question we are going to generate a magic square. First of all we will request the user to enter dimension of square and we will store the variable inside this variable here. Sorry here we have misspelled square here. First of all we will check whether order is odd or not because this program is designed for magic squares with order of odd number. Actually, this is an algorithm to find magic squares of the order or number. Here we have a for loop which iterate from 1 to dimension square. Okay, if dimension is 3, this iteration will be 1 to 9. Before this iteration, we have initialized row index and column index like this. Row index is initialized with 0 and column index is initialized with half of the dimension here we have an if clause inside that we will check for the given row and column index if element is 0 we will, we will directly assign this iteration value into the element and then we will increment this row index and column index using this function inc here in the else part we will do some other way of incrementing row index and column index and then we will assign the current iteration variable value to the newly created row index and column index. So this is what we can do to generate magic squares of the order odd number. Let me run this application here. 
under the dimension of square i will type 5 so here we have the magic square let me run this application again and i will try with order 3 so here we have the magic square 816357492 if we add numbers on column or row on diagonal we will get the number 15 so this is what we meant by magic square so that's it guys in this video we have discussed questions from 41 to 50 so far in this series we have discussed 50 common c sharp beginners questions or exercises i hope you have enjoyed this series you can download this project source code from the link given below in video description if you found this video helpful please thumbs up this video and for more awesome videos like this please be subscribed to this channel dot net more please like and share this video with your friends and c sharp big news have a nice day bye